Hey everyone, welcome back. This is William. Today I want to begin looking at some examples of some beginner recursive functions. Over the next several videos, I will be walking you guys through multiple examples showcasing how to implement recursive programs to help you grasp the essence of recursive programming. Having a variety of examples to work off of is super important to have in your toolkit as it helps you tackle problems with more ease. So for today's problem, we're going to have a crack at implementing multiplication recursively. So the problem goes as follows. Suppose you want to multiply two numbers A and B, but the multiplication operator on your computer is broken and none of the loops seem to work either. So given these constraints, the challenge is how would you take the product of two numbers? I think the meme below gives a pretty big hint. Let's begin by breaking down what A multiplied by B means. It means add B A times, or reciprocally add A B times. I'm sure everyone knows how to multiply, <laughs> but let's walk through an example in detail to understand how the recursive multiplication implementation is derived. Suppose we want to compute a times b with a equals 4 and b equals 3. Well, in order to multiply a and b together, we're going to add b a times. While doing so, we're also going to keep track of how many additions of b we have left to do. This will help us understand how to implement multiplication recursively more easily. Currently, we have four remaining additions to do since we haven't done any. So let's add one instance of B. Now we have three remaining additions to do. Let's add another instance of B. Now we have two remaining additions. Let's add another instance of B. Now we only have one more addition to do. And lastly, we add our final instance of B. And now we can see that we have zero remaining additions to do because we have added B exactly four times or exactly A times. The key observation at this point is to realize that the terminating condition or the base case for this multiplication algorithm is when we run out of remaining additions. In other words, the base case is when there are zero remaining additions. You can also observe that we are adding one instance of a B to the sum each iteration, which you can guess is the body or the work of the function. Furthermore, we can see the transition. It is the reduction in the number of remaining additions. Okay, so let's put it all together. This is the implementation of the recursive function mul, short for multiply, that computes the product of two numbers when a is greater than or equal to zero. Let's walk through the code and break down each component. The first statement is the base case. It checks if a equals zero, meaning that we have no more remaining additions left to do. a in this context can also be thought of as the number of remaining additions we have left to do since we want to add b a times. Therefore, a serves as the total number of additions we wish to perform. On the last line, you can see that we recursively call the multiply function. But notice that we decrease the value of a each iteration in the transition. This ensures that there are exactly a number of recursive calls. Something else to notice is that while decreasing the value of a each iteration, that the value of b remains constant throughout the recursion. Lastly, for each recursive call, we add b to the final sum. Since we know we're only calling the recursive function a total of a times, this constitutes exactly a additions of b, which is the product of a and b. Let's now take a look at what happens when this function is actually called. Suppose we call the multiply function with a equals 4 and b equals 3. When a is 4 and b is 3, we add 3 to the sum and recursively call the function, reducing a by 1. 
When a is 3, we add 3 to the sum and recursively call the multiply function, reducing a by 1. When a is 2, we add 3 to the sum and recursively call the multiply function, reducing a by 1. When a is 1, we add 3 to the sum and recursively call the multiply function, reducing a by 1. When a is 0, we hit the base case and return 0 from the function at which point the recursion begins to unwind and we start summing up the total. The total starts at zero and we begin making our way back up the stack. So three gets added to the total. Now the total is six, nine, and finally 12. In the end, you can see that we successfully multiplied three and four together to get a result of 12. While you now hopefully have a better grasp of how to implement multiplication recursively, there's something we have left to address. In the previous example, we assumed that the value of a was greater than or equal to zero to simplify the example. As a result, this means our function doesn't work correctly when a is less than zero, hence we're not handling negative values properly. So the challenge I have for you guys is to update the multiplication function to support all values of a and b, including negative values of a and b. So I put a few examples below to help with the testing. I will reveal the solution in the next slide, so I encourage you to pause the video and give it a try. I'll give you a short moment. Okay, hopefully you guys gave that a try. Here's the full recursive multiplication function solution. The only thing we need to do to support negative values is to add another branch that checks when a is less than zero. When a is less than zero, inside the branch, a will be negative. So we want to add one to the value of a to increase the value and get a closer to zero, which is our base case. We also want to subtract b instead of adding b because of how multiplication works. If a is negative and b is positive, we want a negative result. But if both numbers are negative, we want a positive result. So this is why we're sub subtracting b here. And when you put it all together, we get a function that can take the product of two numbers. Awesome, that's all I have for you guys on how to implement multiplication recursively. I hope you guys learned something and I'll catch you in the next one.